Google Meet has become one of the top video conferencing apps for many people and in today's video, I will share 10 important personal tips you must know if you are a teacher using Google Meet. Well, even if you are not a teacher, some of these tips are super helpful as they are from my personal experiences from years of using Google Meet, especially the last two. So do stay tuned as I share them with you. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Steph. I run a production house here in Singapore doing photography, videography, live streams, and basically everything tech. Welcome to my channel. Many of you probably don't know that I teach part-time or used to. And yes, I teach students. So in a way, I'm a teacher. A little bit about myself. I graduated in 2004 from the School of Computing with a bachelor's degree in computer science here in the National University of Singapore. And periodically, I give classes online to teach students, usually age 10 and above. So during university, I was actually giving part-time tuition to kids to pay my tuition fees. But after I graduated, I was focusing more on growing my business, so I didn't really have the time to continue my teaching passion. So being on YouTube now, in a way, lets me continue that passion. In a way, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, during COVID, I had the chance to rediscover this passion, teaching students online. Well, you know, teaching students, especially online, is really a pain in the... But you teachers out there will know that with all the frustration and nonsense and things that you get from students, there also comes the joy and satisfaction when your students do well and become useful people in the society when they grow up right that's why teachers are the most selfless underrated and most noble job i would say in the world most of the time somewhat unappreciated i would say anyway back to the topic of teaching online well i think a lot of teachers share the same sentiments as me having a good video conferencing app is very important to be able to teach well especially online so in today's video, I will talk about 10 important tips in using Google Meet for teachers. Well, again, if you're not a teacher, it's always good to know some of these tips, right? So without further ado, let's dive right in. Learning how to schedule a meeting. This is probably the most important tip to know if you are planning to host a Google meeting. When you go to meet.google.com, Click on New Meeting and click on Schedule in Google Calendar. A new tab will pop up for you to key in details essential to your meeting. Most important thing to note here is the link to the Google Meet here, which you can copy by clicking on the icon here and paste it to wherever you want to share it with to your students, either via the email or text messages. Control your Google Meet settings. One of the key things before you start to host a Google Meet with your students is to actually have all the settings in place before the meeting starts. What do all these settings mean? This means restricting their permissions during the meeting. You can do this by clicking on the little lock icon at the bottom right corner once you're in the meeting, which are the host controls. Here you can allow or disallow students to share their screen, chat messages, you can mute them or allow them to turn on or off their video. Change your background or have a clean background. As a teacher, you have to present yourself in the most professional manner as you can. Because a lot of times, students who attend your online classes will likely be accompanied by their parent. So their parents will actually see you online teaching the students. Having a clean background or a professional looking background will let the parents know that their child is in good hands when attending your lessons, right? So how do we do that? In your meeting, mouse over your video and click on the middle icon here that says apply visual effects. Under blur and personal backgrounds, you can click on add your personal background here. So at this part, you can actually upload an image of your own company. So this image will appear as your backdrop. 
Alternatively, you can look for a clean background in your office or home, preferably a clean wall, and that should be good enough to make a good impression on the parents of your students. Make sure your audio and video are clear. The best online meeting is always one that has a clear video and audio. The laptop or your computer's camera isn't always the best. But if you have a professional camera or webcam as your video source, that would be better than using the built-in camera from your computer or laptop. If you can only use your computer's built-in camera, always, always make sure that you are sitting in front of a light source either towards the window or get an LED light panel to cast light on your face while you are teaching. Something like this. I have a light source on me. So similarly for audio, if you have the budget to get a USB dedicated microphone, go for it. Because the built-in microphones in your computer or laptop are usually not ideal. Even a basic pair of earphones or AirPods will be much, much better. If you have external devices connected to your computer, make sure you select them by going to the three dots button here. Click on settings and under audio or video, select your attached device accordingly. Make sure to pin yourself for everyone. All right, for online classes, who is the most important person? Of course, it's you, the teacher, right? So do make sure you pin yourself for everyone in the class to ensure they're always seeing your face when you are teaching. So how do you do that? Again, on your video, mouse over and you can see the pin icon here. Select pin yourself to the screen for everyone. Make sure that the students do not unpin themselves from their screens by speaking to the parents before the lesson starts. This is to ensure that no students will disrupt your class when you are teaching halfway. In almost all my online lessons, I have always used this function in some ways. To share this screen means all the students will be able to see what is on your computer. For example, if you are a music teacher, you might want to share scores or music notes or even videos of singers that you want to share with your students. So how do you do that? Click on the icon here that says present now. So now you can either share a Chrome tab, a specific window on your computer or the entire screen of your computer. However, do take note that if you want to share audio, you can only do it with a Chrome tab and also remember to check the button here. Another very useful feature of Google Meet is to be able to utilize the whiteboard function where you can scribble notes or make drawings during your meetings. So how do you do that? Click on the three dots button and select whiteboard. The whiteboard will open in a new tab. And you can share this screen with your students by clicking on the Google Meet icon and present this tab. After you are done with the whiteboard, you can also share this file by clicking on the blue share icon here. Record your Google Meet meetings. As a teacher, most likely you will want to record all your Google Meet meetings to be shared with your students or your parents, sorry, or their parents later on after the lessons end. However, you can only do so with a paid version of Google Meet. So if you have the paid version, you can click on the three dots button here and select the recording option here. Games. Did you know that you can actually play games on Google Meet? No, not students' favorite Roblox or Mobile Legends, those kind of games. But simply by making use of the chat function on Google Meet. Do you know that? Okay, for myself, my students absolutely love this game section during my classes. So go to the chat messages icon here. And of course, to make sure to let everyone be able to send messages. The most common game I like to play with my students is test your knowledge. 
So at the end of the lesson, I will type in questions from the class so that students who have been listening in class will know the answers. So for example, I will ask how old was Mozart when he wrote his first concerto? Then the student who types in the correct answer, the first student who types in the correct answer gets a point. And at the end of 10 or 20 questions, the student with the highest score gets a prize. See, there are so many fun ways to utilize this chat message function, right? So it's all up to your creativity. How or what type of games do you want to play? And by the way, do you know the answer? How old was Mozart when he first wrote his concerto? Google Meet for Education. If you are a teacher for a school or education institution and want to utilize Google Meet for your teaching needs, you can actually go to edu.google.com and discover the options for you to sign up for a Google Workspace for Education account. The Education Fundamentals account is free, but you have to meet certain criteria to be eligible. With an Education Fundamentals account, you will have access to more functions within Google Meet than a free version of Google Meet. So visit edu.google.com to see if you qualify. So there you have it. If you are a teacher and you use Google Meet for your video conferencing teachings online, I hope these 10 tips were useful to you to enhance your overall teaching experience. And of course, make yourself look better as a teacher if you know more if you know of any more tips do share them in the comments below i would absolutely love to hear them do remember to subscribe to this channel for more useful content like today's video and until the next one i'm steph happy teaching take care and bye bye